the Saturday Lunchtime News, now on BBC One with Maxine Mawinney. Good afternoon. China and the United States have formally joined the global agreement on tackling climate change reached in Paris last year. The two countries represent 40% of the world's carbon emissions. Speaking at a news conference ahead of the G20 summit in China, President Obama said the agreement might be remembered as the moment we finally decided to save our planet. Our correspondent John Sudworth reports from the city hosting the summit, Hangzhou. Under blue skies, free of the all-too-common scourge of Chinese pollution, the US president arrived in China with climate change on his mind. In a bit of careful choreography, China had already just announced that it had ratified the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, with President Xi Jinping speaking of his vision of a low-carbon future. And then it was President Obama's turn to announce that the US too was ratifying the treaty much earlier than expected. We have a saying in America that you need to put your money where your mouth is. And when it comes to combating climate change, that's what we're doing. The Paris Climate Agreement was signed at the end of last year after marathon negotiations. It aims to keep the average rise in global temperatures to below two degrees, but it only comes into force if ratified by at least 55 countries representing 55% of global carbon emissions. The US and China together account for almost 40%, so today's announcement marks a big step forward. US-China relations are often strained, but by making this joint announcement here in front of the world's media, President Xi gets to burnish his reputation as an international statesman, and President Obama, with just a few months left in office, gets to cement his legacy on an important policy priority. Critics of the Paris deal say it doesn't go far enough to curb emissions, but few can doubt the symbolism of the world's two biggest polluters ratifying the document. And by doing it here at the G20 summit, the hope is other nations will now be encouraged to follow suit. Now, one other global leader is, of course, making her way here to Hangzhou. And Theresa May has already come under pressure for Britain to ratify the Paris Climate Accord. And that pressure will now, of course, only increase as a result of what we've seen here today. I've just been handed a statement from a spokesperson for the Prime Minister, which says the government will ratify as soon as possible, but there is no date yet. John, thank you.